These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. And what type of functional group is this? Pardon? An aldehyde. Good. How about this? about this if the X is a halogen? That's what we usually use X to stand for. Halide? Right. I think maybe uh, you could call it an acyl halide. Because this is what we would consider an acyl group over here. So this is an acyl halide. And an alkyl is just carbon-carbon? Oh, yeah. So an alkyl halide would be this. An alkyl halide would just be a halogen on a regular carbon chain. Alkyl just means a carbon chain. Uh, so this would be an alkyl halide. So acyl specifically means R and a carbonyl. Acyl means uh, a carbonyl uh, attached to the halogen. Okay. How about this? An ester? It turns out that this is what we call an anhydride. Oh. Anhydride. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go to that reaction in a well. second. Yeah. yeah, it's true. You can make this by reacting two carboxylic acids with each other, and then they would lose water in the process. So um, for that reason, it's called an anhydride, because you can make it in a reaction that loses water. Uh, but for the most part, we just memorize that this is what uh, we call an anhydride. So it's basically two carbonyls connected by an oxygen. Two carbonyls connected by an oxygen. So this is not an anhydride. This is not an anhydride, uh, so we need to know uh, what the name of this functional group is. This is a very important type of functional group. Uh, and this is an ester. I think someone had guessed that uh, this earlier compound was the ester, but this is the ester. We don't want to confuse that with carboxylic acids. So if there's an OR group attached to the carbonyl, that's an ester. But if there's an OH group attached, there's a carboxylic acid. And uh, either of you know what we would call this. Yeah. I don't know if I pronounce that right. I usually call it an amide, but maybe it's better to call it an amide. What's the know. difference between an amide and an amine? That's uh, definitely an important question. It's the same as the difference between an acyl halide and an alkyl halide. So this would be an amine. An amine is a nitrogen just connected to a normal alkyl group whereas an amide is a nitrogen connected to an acyl group, to this carbonyl over here. To give a specific example, this would be an amine. Just a nitrogen with a normal carbon chain is an amine. We've been working with amines all along in the course uh, when we did things like, uh, we use these as nucleophiles. They have a lone pair, so we've been using those as nucleophiles, even if we haven't focused on those. Yeah, so it's actually very important to know the distinction between those. So this is an amide, and it's unfortunate that sounds a lot like an amine, but those are uh, different things. By the way, just like an amine, um, these H's could actually be carbon chains. Well, by the same token, these H's could be carbon chains too. So this is just uh, a nitrogen with however many carbon chains attached to a carbonyl as an amide. You can use those amines with um, ketones to create amines, right? That's double true. Double bond ends, C double bond ends. That's one, of the re that's, yeah, that's one of the reactions that you've seen in the past. And that's a good point. There's one of those other pesky names that sounds very similar, so you guys should also know, it sounds like you already know. This is an imine. 
So those are three names that's very easy to get confused with each other that's important to have all in one place in your notes. So again, here we have an amine. And that's specifically an amine tube connected to a carbon, or is there anything else required? It's a nitrogen double bonded to a carbon. It doesn't HS matter what it's connected to. Those Sorry. H's could be carbons, right? That's right. These H's. Again, the H's in all these pictures could be carbons. As long, uh, so an amine is a nitrogen with an alkyl group, and it could have uh, however many carbon chains you want on it. An imine is a nitrogen double bonded to a carbon, and again, these hydrogens could be carbons. And an amide is a nitrogen bonded to a carbonyl, and again, these hydrogens could be carbons. Okay. All right, we, we won't go, uh, I don't think, through the full IUPAC nomenclature for each of those, because we have those in the textbook, but it's really crucial just to know the basic names for these functional groups, um, especially not to get these guys confused. So these are our basic names for our functional groups here. Um, now, uh, it's important to see that these kind of fall into two categories. There's kind of the last midterm category and this midterm, uh, and this and after the midterm category. These two are very similar to each other, obviously. Ketones and aldehydes have almost all the same reactivity as each other. And everyone else is in its own category of carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. So this and these four basically form their own category. Well, why do we put these into two separate categories? Because they react differently. Aldehydes and ketones tend to go through the same types of reactions, and carboxylic acids and acid derivatives tend to go through the same types of reactions. So it helps to think of them separately. So here's the carboxylic acid and acid derivative category. Uh, and uh, what's the big difference between them? Why do they go through different types of reactions? Well, all of these carboxylic acids and acid derivatives could be written like this. They could all be written like this, where we have some heteroatom connected to a carbonyl. This is just neither a hydrogen nor a carbon. This is just a good symbol for neither a hydrogen nor a carbon. Something that's neither a hydrogen nor a carbon connected to the carbonyl, that's what all of these things have in common. They have, uh, basically they have an electronegative atom connected to the carbon. All of these things, carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, have an electronegative atom bonded to the carbon. And the reason why L is a good symbol for this, I don't know if your instructor uses this, but I think this is in the book. The thing that makes all of these special is that this is uh, a leaving group, or can be made into a leaving group or is at least a decent possible leaving group. So this is something that can, under some conditions, leave. Electronegative atoms can leave, at least under some conditions. Uh, electronegative atoms tend to be uh, leaving groups because they don't mind taking electrons. That's what a leaving group does. It leaves and takes the electrons. So this is at least a possible leaving group. Whereas you can see, obviously, these are not leaving groups. We never see a hydrogen or a carbon leaving group. That's why these are in a whole special category, and they have different reactions from these other five compounds. All right. Uh, all right, so these all um, come together in one category. And your, the second language book has a very good way to put it. This L here is basically just a wild card in the sense that most of the reactions that we're seeing simply take one of the L groups and replace it with a different L group. So we might start with this and see how to replace it with this group. Like transesterification. That's right. That would take one ester L and replace it with a different ester L. That's right. So that's a good example of exchanging this wild card over here. The reason we can do that is, again, is that these all can be leaving groups. So they can leave and be replaced by something else. Another lesson that teaches us is um, all of these reactions tend to reform the carbonyl whenever possible. That is, even when this reacts, at first you destroy the carbonyl, but then in the very next step, you usually get it right back. Uh, the carbonyl bond is a very happy and stable bond. The carbonyl bond is a very happy and stable bond, and it likes to reform whenever it can. Carbonyls like to reform whenever they can. Well, unfortunately, the carbonyls can't reform in aldehydes and ketones. When an aldehyde or ketone gets attacked, it can't reform the carbonyl because it doesn't have a good leaving group. But because all of these guys do have good leaving groups, they tend to almost always reform their carbonyls. And that, again, is why the L is like a, a wild card. Um, a nucleophile comes in and, for one, uh, temporarily breaks up the carbonyl bond, but then the leaving group leaves and we get to reform the carbonyl. And the reason why your instructor went through all of these reactions so quickly is that in your instructor's mind, they're all the same thing. They're all just the same reaction of a nucleophile coming in and replacing the L. Not all of them, but most of them are similar to that. So we have to see that pattern. OK, um, so that would put uh, all of these in the uh, same category. Essentially, those nucleophiles are replacing the L because the L will leave right. to create that double bond. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's also important to know the reactivity of these, which are most reactive and which are least reactive. Um, well, I've actually written them in order of reactivity. This is the most reactive at the top, and this is the least reactive at the bottom. Um, it would be a good test question to ask you to explain why this is most reactive and this is least reactive. Wait, sorry, yep. what about the carboxylic acid? 
Uh, sometimes it's best to keep the carboxylic acids separate, um, but it's actually pretty similar to esters in reactivity. Carboxylic acids are quite similar to esters in reactivity. We so can see why in a second. The acyl halide is the most reactive. That's right. And the amides are the least reactive. Like you said, sorry, carboxylic acids like easter. Carboxylic acids are similar to esters in reactivity. So uh, sometimes people might even write them, say, on the same row of this table to show that these are very similar in reactivity. Uh, there, there are some drawbacks to writing it this way, uh, but in many cases, these are pretty similar in reactivity. 